Well, hello there and welcome once again to School of the Spirit. It's always my joy to have us here again, sharing deep truths from the scriptures that open our eyes and uh, open us up into realms and dimensions of the Spirit. As you know, uh, God is Spirit and it is important that we know Him in the frame of his reference, the context of his personality. So if we must know God, we must know him in the spirit. And it means that we must not be strangers to the realm of the spirit. When you become born again, you are born of the spirit. And therefore, it means you have a life in the spirit. And the realm of the spirit is a very real place that we need to know exists and as children of God we are part of and so the Holy Spirit has been given to us by God to help us explore and understand the dynamics of that realm that we will not be strangers but that we will be citizens and as well as gain mastery in the happenstances of this realm of the Spirit so we've been talking about finding God in prayer uh, started with the first episode and I, I mentioned to us some basic things about prayer which I believe um, if you check the description box below you'll be able to um, watch the link of the first episodes but we're, we're going deeper and this this ep this this episode is or this series rather it's all about communicating intimacy in prayer how we can attain intimacy and build a rich relationship with God through prayer so we're going deeper today uh, I want to share with us five basic points uh, to attain intimacy with God in prayers we're still talking about finding God in prayer Five basic points that you must understand and um, submit yourself to if you want to experience intimacy with God. God wants to be known. God desires fellowship. That's the reason why he created us. That he can have a creature in his image, in his likeness, that can interact with him so that we can socialize with God and experience fellowship, communion is what he desires with us and more than ever before prayer becomes one of the systems actually the major system by which we can experience intimacy with god and i want to share with you five simple basic but very important points uh, that will really help you in your journey towards intimacy with god in prayers when you become intimate with god the advantages are limitless. You are able to hear from God. You are able to understand His ways. You are able to find His will in any issue. All of a sudden, you become one in reality with God. You actually one with God when you are born again. Uh, but that's a positional revelation. But in the place of prayer, when you attain intimacy with God, you become one with Him in reality. There's so much to enjoy from a life of intimacy with God. So I want you to listen to these five basic points and then I'll pray with you and we're done for this episode. Number one, before God calls us to prayer, he calls us to himself. It's important to note that before God calls us to prayer, he calls us to himself. God did not call us to a religion. God's intention was not religion. No, religion was man's attempt to get to God. Religion actually started in Genesis chapter 3. As soon as man ate the fruit and their eyes were open, I'm talking about the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Bible says their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked and they sued fig leaves to cover themselves and you and I know there is no way that figs or leaves can be a good covering 
uh, good clothing for a human being uh, so that 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 represents religion man's attempt because they sued fig leaves they felt that they were going to appear better or be acceptable to god when they are covered but you see before that fall man actually had the glory of god as his clothing in the garden because you must realize that the garden of eden was a a physical environment that was captured within or was a subset of a spiritual realm of god's presence so the glory the life of god that flowed into that garden and enriched it was part of what became man's covering so god's intention was never religion for man and that's why much later in chapter 3 you find that god took off the skins of an animals and clothed them that's redemption now so religion is man's attempt to get to god but redemption is god's ultimate plan to salvage man now god did not call us to a religion of a bunch of rules and regulations you must do this and it's not a life of doings it's a life of being and becoming so before god calls us to prayer he calls us to himself so it's important that we don't exalt activities above uh, the experience itself and so if you must enjoy intimacy with god in prayer you must realize that god calls us first to himself mark chapter 3 verse 14 says that he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them if you read it in king james translation it says that they should be with him which speaks of necessity and that he might send them which is a thought of probability so before god calls us to prayer he calls us to himself and when we realize that god has called us to himself then we begin to understand and embrace the fact that prayer is really about intimacy with god it's it's just an experience uh for us to to really get to feel what it is to be drawn to god or to be close to god and that's really important before god calls us to prayer he calls us to himself that means that even after the prayer session the presence of god is still with you the fact that the presence of god is not always revealed around you doesn't mean that he is not with you he said lo i am with you always even to the end of the age he said he himself has said he will never leave us nor forsake us so whether i pray or not the presence of god is always around me but when i pray i get to vitally experience that presence that is always around me all right your phone um the moment you switch on your your data connection you get to experience what's happening in the internet in real time and then when you take off the data connection everything ceases it doesn't mean that the internet itself comes to a halt the internet and everything going on people are still uploading programs and a lot of things are still happening on the internet it is when you switch on your data connection that you get to be part of what's going on um, in the global internet space and that's how prayer is so when we realize that we will we will embrace the fact that our intimacy with god goes beyond even the activity of prayer so that translates prayer from being a an activity to becoming a lifestyle from being um a procedure to becoming um a, a, a state of the heart so before god calls us to prayer he calls us to himself point number two we must find a place to be alone with god we must find a place to be alone with god i call it attaining silence you see there are two things you must attain if you really want to find god in prayer if you want to talk to god and hear from god if you really want to vitally experience his presence you must embrace the place of silence and stillness i'm talking about silence in this point number two we must find a place 
to be alone with God. In Luke chapter 11, the Bible says from verse 1 that now Jesus was praying in a certain place. The, the word certain means Jesus was specific and intentional about places where he went to pray. He could communicate with the Father God anywhere, but they were specific places. And that's because Jesus understood uh, the laws of atmosphere and environment. Jesus understood the, the, the mystery of altars uh, and its spiritual significance in the place of prayer. So Jesus had designated places where he went to pray. One of those places was in the Garden of Olives. And that was why he was in that garden shortly before, on the Mount of Olives, before his, he was betrayed and arrested. So he had a particular place where he would go to pray. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible will say that before dawn, he had sneaked into a solitary place to pray. And if you really want to experience God in prayer, if you want to know God and communicate intimately with Him in prayer, you must understand the importance of meeting God in a certain place. The moment you meet God in a place, that place becomes an altar. An altar is an intersection between heaven and earth. An altar is a physical environment that is set apart to host spiritual realities. So, Abraham, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 12, when God appeared to him between Bethel and I, he built an altar in Bethel, in the east of Bethel. Now, many years later in Genesis 28, the Bible says Jacob was running away from home and he had to spend the night in Bethel, not knowing that that place where he was was the intersection between heaven and earth. That was the place Abraham had erected an altar to God. And so the spiritual activity that began to happen when that altar was created because Abraham designated that place as an altar to God did not cease simply because Abraham died. So when you designate a place to God, uh, you are careful about the environment. You try to ensure that there are no physical noises around because you know you need to learn to quiet the noises around you uh, so that you can gain focus internally because you see prayer is more of an internal um, activity than an outward expression if you really want to attain intimacy with god so you must find a place to be alone with god it could be your room it could be even in the toilet uh, there are people who usually find God when they are under the shower. It could be in your car as you're driving to work or driving to a grocery store. It, it could be in your office. But make sure there is a place separated apart where you are away from the noise of the external world and then your soul can make free contact with God. It's called silence. It's called silence. You're being able to steal your physical environment so you can connect with God. And Jesus did that and so many saints in the Bible did that. The prophets in the Old Testament will always go on the mountains because, you know, it was, it's always lonely in the mountain and it's always away from the city and the countryside. And it's, it's, it's a lot quiet there so you can hear God. I remember... Years ago, you know, we were used to always going to physical mountains or going to places for retreat to just be with God. And it was such an awesome time that you hear God speak to you more than you can um, have when you are around people. Point number three, we must learn to quieten our minds, our souls actually. We must learn to quieten our souls. This speaks of stillness. This speaks of stillness. Now that you have quieted the noise around you by being in a lonely place, you must learn to quieten your minds. I don't know if it has happened to you, but I believe it happens to everybody. You know, sometimes when you pray and uh, you, you find 
a lot of noise inside of you your mind is still thinking about this or that that usually happens at the first stages or the first moment in prayer um, let's say if you were to pray for an hour the first 10 15 minutes you may find yourself for some even to 20 25 minutes the first 20 25 minutes you may find your mind still thinking about a lot of things in fact i realize that every time i begin to pray i start remembering a lot of activities i should have engaged in so here's what i do i get a book as soon as i begin to pray and those thoughts begin to return and i begin to reminisce on things i should do people to call places to go um, things to worry about or things to plan about i get that book and begin to write them sometimes i could even remember oh i'm supposed to give this person something or send the support to this person i get a book and i write them down and as soon as i've written them down i continue praying all right because the goal is you want to attain stillness stillness is when your soul becomes quiet and ready to interact with god in spirit you know our soul is noisy because our soul interacts with the outside world so every time you're alone your soul begins to replay all the activities all the events that has happened in fact it even happens when you sleep in ecclesiastes chapter 5 the bible says dreams come from so many activities of the day so sometimes when people go to sleep it's just their soul replaying all the activity that transpired in the day with within the lens of your opinion how you felt or how you think things should have gone but you want to attain stillness because you want to hear from god because prayer is really about talking with god not just talking to god you want to know that god has heard you you want to know that god understands what you were saying you really want a feedback and so you must learn to still your soul so we must learn to quieten our minds and how do we quiet our minds i'll give you a very simple strategy well there are several strategies there is the strategy of praise and worship because when you praise god you magnify god above everything around and within you and god becomes so magnified when you praise him that you get lost in that picture that is magnified before you all right uh worship is also a strategy it, it gets you to focus on god till you are absorbed into the one you worship but a very simple strategy to quieten your minds or to still your soul in prayer is to simply meditate on the word i want to read a scripture for you in psalms chapter 63 verses 6 in psalm 63 verses 6 i want to read a scripture for you there and show you how meditation helps in quieting the soul psalm 63 verse 6 here's what it says it says when i remember you on my bed i meditate on you in the night watches when i remember you on my bed i meditate on you in the night watches the night watches are significant timings um, of prayer in the spirit significant timings for prayer the night watches 12 midnight 9 p.m 12 midnight 3 a.m and even 6 a.m you know we're drawing from the life of david because david was a hebrew and in the old testament god revealed himself to the hebrew nation and in the hebrew nation there are about eight watches in the day these watches were moments of prayer and sacrifice required by god from the children of israel there was 12 midnight 3 a.m 6 a.m 9 a.m 12 noon 3 p.m 6 p.m 9 p.m and 12 midnight again so from 9 p.m from 6 p.m 9 p.m 12 midnight 3 a.m and 6 a.m these are the night watches and so david said i will remember you when i remember you on my bed i meditate on you 
so when you meditate on the word of god it helps your soul to focus and attain stillness let me read it in other trans- translations so you could understand in amplified translation it says when i remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches message translation if i'm sleepless at midnight i spend the hours in grateful reflection look at that and i i can't sleep at midnight what do i do wake up watch netflix no wake up surf the internet not really wake up just calling someone randomly no it's a time to fellowship with god because of the quietness of the night he says i will spend the hours in grateful reflection meditation is simply reflecting on the word of god meditation is the art that transforms that which is written in the word to become living pictures all right it's imagining scriptures and then all of a sudden god is magnified in it of course our imaginations have the magnifying tendencies so when we focus our minds our imaginations on scriptures and we meditate we are magnifying god until it gets to a point where we become absorbed we become lost in thought as we meditate so meditating on the word of god is one simple and effective strategy for quieting our souls number four We must learn to allow God to search our hearts. We must learn to allow God to search our hearts. And I'm going to explain what it means for God to search your heart. Because prayer is an activity of the heart. Actually, it's not really about what you say in your mind. It's a heart connection with God. It doesn't mean that what you say in prayer... Uh, when you vocalize prayer doesn't mean that God will not hear you. God always hears us. As a matter of fact, there is really no protocol to prayer. God has a way of relating with us individually. He hears the prayers whether you say it or you think it or it's coming as an impulse from your heart. He hears it. He created prayer. So, you know, he understands whatever, even when the prayer is your tears, he understands it. But you see, when if you really have want this intimate connection you must learn to allow god to search your heart searching of the heart does not simply mean okay god i'm wrong i've done some wrong stuff and so uh, i'm kind of like repenting it's part of it but even more searching of the heart is allowing your heart to empty itself before god it's going beyond the hurdles of human protocol created in prayer or mental uh, 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 rigor to a simple heart connection with God. It's just emptying yourself before Him. That's really what makes your prayer deep. It also means, you know, being sincere before God. Being truthful before God. Coming to God with your weakness. Coming to God with your insufficiency. And then allowing his all-sufficiency to flow into you. I want to read a scripture. Psalms 51 verses 6. Here it is. It says, Behold, you desire truth in the inward part. And in the hidden part, you will make me know wisdom. What's the hidden part? Your heart. Jeremiah 17 says in verse 9, The heart of a man is deceitful, and above all things desperately wicked. No one can discern it. Not just no one can understand what it says, but also no one can discern where your heart is. If I ask you where your heart is, you're going to point to the, the region of your chest where the physical organ is that's true that's the physical organ but you don't know where your heart is this is the physical but the real heart you don't know where it is so you can't discern its location only god understands and knows it your heart is the core aspect of your being everything about you comes from the state of your heart 
Let me read that same scripture in message translation, Psalms 51 verse 6. It says, What you are after is truth from the inside out. Enter me, then conceive a new life. So God, God wants to connect with us in truth and sincerity. So you need to learn to empty your heart before him. Many times we go into the place of prayer with a lot of things we assume God knows. A lot of requests that we should tender before God that we assume God knows. Don't assume in prayer. Tell him. Ask him. Talk to him. Sometimes we are annoyed at a lot of things and we have to pray. Complain to him. Talk to God. The thing about the heart is it communicates in simple terms. There's no complexity in the heart. It's just surrendering to God and this is me this is what's in me and allowing him to bring the change from inside out sometimes he brings healing to your heart sometimes he encourages you sometimes he challenges you but if you want to experience intimacy with God in prayer you must allow him to search your heart because that's where God really picks our prayer from and then number five, finally, we must open ourselves to receive of his love. We must open ourselves to receive of his love. One of the things that God makes real to us in the place of prayer, because prayer is all about fellowship primarily, one of the things that God uh, makes us experience in prayer is his love. The warmth, the affection, uh, the drawing close to, it becomes a real-time experience with God. All right? All of a sudden, you can sense this. Um, you, you, you're being drawn into his presence. You can sense his warmth and love all over you. Let me read a scripture for you. Psalms 42, verses 8. Psalms 42, verses 8. Over oh, 7, it says, Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Now, that's a play of... Um, that's a play of um, figure of speech there all your waves all your waves so this 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 speaks of a river flowing the waves just like if you go to an ocean the waves of the ocean as they overlap on one another so the love of god overflows and overwhelms you in the place of prayer prayer is one of the place where you really experience the practical love of God for you. The Bible says that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And God wants you to experience that love because um, intimacy is the summit of love. It's the peak of love. All right. And uh, it is important that you allow yourself to receive of his love. Allow yourself, allow the love of God to flow over you always become conscious that God loves you no matter what. He doesn't love you because of anything. The Bible never explains to us why God loves us. He only tells us the extent of God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But why he loves us so much? No. Doesn't explain. Because the love of God cannot be explained. It can only be experienced. And every moment in prayer is an opportunity for experience God's love for you to experience that love now before i go i've given you five basic points that you must embrace to experience intimacy in prayer i want to give you two things two temptations to avoid in the place of prayer you will be surprised at what i'm about to tell you two temptations to avoid if you must attain intimacy in prayer number one we must learn to take our eyes Avoid the temptation of taking our eyes off God and turning them to our struggles. Every time you take your eyes 
off the Lord and focus on yourself, you've been caught in a trap. You lose communication. You lose touch. You, don't, you no longer feel the presence of God. It now looks like it's just you. And that temptation is something we need to avoid. Once and again, the, the enemy will always try to come in our thoughts to remind us of our struggles emotionally, physically, addictions, and so many things we are battling with. Because he wants to bring us to that realm where we, the realm of religion, where we, we keep seeing ourselves struggling to try to get to God. And, and you don't need to get to God. He, in him we live, we move, and have our being. You don't, you don't need to try to get close to God. You are already in God. Prayer only allows for a vital expression, a vital experience of that which is already a reality. We must avoid the temptation of taking our eyes off the Lord unto ourselves. Psalm 16, here's what Psalm 16 has to say. Psalm 16 says in verse... Eight, he said, I have set the Lord always before me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. So long as you keep the Lord as your focus, so long as you focus on him, his grace, his love, his all-sufficiency, his mightiness, so long as you focus on it and get embraced in it, you will never have to be trapped in thinking about yourself, your struggles, your pain, your inabilities, your insufficiencies, what you think you don't have. So it's a temptation you need to learn to avoid. Temptation number two that you must avoid in prayer. We must learn to avoid forgetting his abilities and focusing on ours. When God calls you to the place of prayer, it is so that he, you can explore by his spirit the vast and the mightiness and the depth of his abilities and not yours god doesn't call you because you can do anything for him he calls you because he wants to show you how much he can do through you paul said in philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ which strengthened me now, I want to read the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. You must avoid the temptation of forgetting his divine abilities and focusing on yours you have nothing to offer before god except yourself and so god wants you to consistently focus on his ability on his mighty power on his boundless love on his mercies on his goodness get focused on it till you are absorbed into it if you do this I guarantee you, you will experience real intimacy with God in the place of prayer. Thank you so much. I'd like to just pray with you uh, before we end this episode. Father, I pray that that person watching me right now, that your spirit will come upon them. And in their private time of prayers, that they will experience you. They will experience intimacy with you. Bring the reality of what I have said to manifest in their lives they'll never be the same in jesus name amen i know that these truths you have received has changed you transformed you and i look forward to a greater time a greater experience with you please if this video and other videos have blessed you please let us know at the comment section we want to have your feedback and there will be an email at the description box where you can send us your feedback and messages from god bless you and bye for now